Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. And today we're going to be talking about something very fundamental in differential pairs, which is sometimes misconstrued and taken out of context. And that guideline is tight coupling in differential pairs. Now, tight coupling is something that is very poorly defined because nobody can ever assign a number to it. So I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but what we're gonna do is look at a specific aspect later in this video, where we look at what happens with tight coupling in length tuning structures. So these are two very important interrelated topics, and we're gonna dive deep in this video. So in this video, we wanna talk about what exactly tight coupling means in differential pairs. And then we're gonna go a little bit farther and we're gonna talk about how tight coupling influences what's called mode conversion in length tuning structures. So first things first, what exactly is tight coupling? Well, I use air quotes because nobody can really define a specific number for what constitutes a tightly coupled differential pair. And the number that you give it is generally arbitrary. So typically if you're inside of a program to do PCB design like All Team Designer and you're creating your differential pair impedance profile, what it's going to do is it's going to set some default distance here between the pairs along their edge. So here I have my PCB substrate and then I have my ground plane and then I have my traces up here on the top layer. So we're just looking at microstrips for the moment. So in All Team, it applies a default of five mils between these two pairs. So is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, it's just a number because they have to assign something when you start creating your differential pair rules in the layer stack manager. So that's the first point to note. Now, if you were doing strip lines, you would essentially have the same thing. You would just have another ground plane on the top. When we talk about tight coupling, what we really need to do is choose some value for this spacing here we'll just call this S, in relation to this value here for the substrate thickness, we'll call H. What exactly does tight coupling do in a PCB and specifically in differential pairs? Well, when we have tight coupling, we actually have some capacitance, mutual capacitance here between these two pairs, and they have their own self capacitance here, C sub S and C sub S, back to the ground plane. And we have our mutual capacitance here. We also have some mutual inductance between them. Now, I'm not gonna draw it because this is gonna get really messy, but the point is that there is also a mutual inductance and a self-inductance involved between these traces. What that means is that the impedance odd mode of one of these traces with respect to the other trace is just equal to this square root term. So we have L minus the mutual inductance divided by the capacitance of one trace plus two times the mutual capacitance. This spacing between the pairs creates some deviation between the characteristic impedance of just this trace, which is given by this formula, and the odd mode impedance of one of these traces when this other trace is present. If I were to take the width that I calculate for this trace needed to hit, let's say, a characteristic impedance target of 50 ohms, then I start to design my differential pair with that same width, what's gonna happen to the odd mode impedance? Well, the odd mode impedance is going to be less than Z sub zero. The odd mode impedance is always less than Z sub zero because you see here we have a mutual inductance that's being subtracted from L, so that lowers the numerator. And then the denominator is larger too, so that also lowers this whole fraction. And so that's what gives us this odd mode impedance less than Z sub zero. That's always true for differential pairs. So why is this important? Well, the odd mode impedance is the actual impedance of this trace when it's part of a differential pair. And that's the impedance that's used for termination in differential interfaces, not this value here. So if we're doing a typical high speed board and we're going to have, let's say four layers or six layers, maybe this outer layer is very thin. How do we design these layers so that we get minimal deviation between the odd mode impedance and the characteristic impedance? And what happens if we're not on that type of substrate? Well, let's take a look a little bit further. 
So we can summarize this deviation between the odd mode impedance and the characteristic impedance of this trace for a given width value, W, in a single graph. So let's say that I calculate the ratio of Z0 divided by Z odd. And you can calculate these ratios using the layer stack manager in Altium Designer. You can use pretty much any other impedance calculator that you like to calculate these ratios and get an idea of when these two values converge. If we were to then calculate this as a function of h for a fixed value of s, we would get a curve that looks something kind of like this. And it eventually tends towards a value of 1 here. So as we make this distance between the ground plane and the traces smaller, z0 and z odd become much more similar. And that's why this curve starts to converge to 1. Now this is for a large value of spacing between these two pairs. So if we have a larger value of spacing, this curve will look like this. But what happens if we now have tight coupling and we bring these closer together? Well, if we have tight coupling, the curve will instead look something like this. S equals small gives us a much larger deviation between the characteristic impedance and the odd mode impedance. The reason for that is because First of all, this mutual capacitance will be larger, so that reduces the odd mode impedance compared to the characteristic impedance, and my mutual inductance will be larger, so that further reduces it. And that's what makes this ratio here, characteristic over odd impedance, much larger. So the result here is that when you have tighter coupling between your two traces in your pair, you can't just use this W value that you calculate for the characteristic impedance as your width for the odd mode impedance, because you're gonna have a big difference between these two curves. And actually, when you have a very thick substrate, so let's say something like uh, 15 mil here, this value here can get as high as something like 1.6. So a 60% deviation between the uh, characteristic impedance and the actual impedance here for the odd mode. So what this means is that if I design a trace with a width that gives me a 50 ohm characteristic impedance, and I'm on a 15 mil substrate, my odd mode impedance will actually be much smaller. It's gonna be something like 31.25 if this ratio is 1.6. So that's a significant difference in the impedance that we actually have in this differential pair when we have very small coupling. So this is one of the main reasons to spread out those traces a little bit. That way your curve that relates this ratio to this uh, substrate thickness looks more like this and tends closer to one very quickly compared to this curve when we have tight coupling. So what happens when we have to do something like length tuning when we have these different options for our coupling distance between our differential pairs? So that's what we want to look at next, because when we have these deviations in the actual impedance of the trace, we also have a deviation in the propagation constant, and that propagation and constant influences how we apply length tuning structures. So in differential pairs, just like we have an odd mode impedance, we also have an odd mode propagation constant. So if I were to go back and look at the propagation constant, just for a moment, the lossless propagation constant of my differential pair, it would essentially be the imaginary constant times omega, which is the angular frequency, multiplied by square root of LC. So obviously there are more terms in here that add into the loss, and that's gonna be a topic for another video. But this would be the propagation constant for a signal on one of the traces when that trace is isolated from all other traces. But as soon as we take that same trace and put it into a differential pair, we actually have an odd mode propagation constant, which has this equation. So here we see our mutual inductance comes back in and our mutual capacitance comes back in. So we have our 2CM here, and then we have our LM here. So these are our mutual inductance and capacitance, just like we saw in that earlier scene. Now, these propagation constants are measuring a delay. So they're measured in time per distance. So this is essentially an inverse velocity. When we have this trace as part of a differential pair, what happens is we now have a situation with 
the odd mode propagation constant is larger than the propagation constant on that same trace when that trace is totally isolated. So we also have this type of curve as a function of our distance to the substrate and spacing, and it actually looks very similar. And instead of this ratio, we now have this ratio. So the odd mode propagation constant divided by the propagation constant of the isolated trace, same width in this case. And here we see, again, bigger deviation when we have tighter coupling. And here when we have larger coupling, we see smaller deviation. And again, as our substrate thickness tends back to zero, eventually these curves intersect at a value of one on the y-axis. So very similar behavior when we have tight coupling for a differential pair. This becomes very important in length tuning because if we now look at what happens in a length tuning structure, what do we get? Well, in a length tuning structure, if I draw out one of my traces, and then I draw out my other trace that needs to have a length tuning structure, so something like this, what's happening in each of these sections? Well, here we're swapping between tight coupling, where we have a small S value, and then we swap to a larger S value. Here we have gamma one, we're gonna call this gamma one here, and then here in this region, what happens? Well, here we have gamma two. We have a deviation in the impedance along this length tuning structure and a deviation in the propagation constant in this length tuning structure. Now, the problem with all of this is that your CAD tool assumes that even in these regions where we have the length tuning being applied, that this propagation constant here is actually this value, not this value. And remember, this value is less than gamma sub two. So what that means is that CAD tools are actually underestimating just a little bit what happens in these length tuning structures as you apply them on a differential pair to bring the signals back into phase. So this creates a particular problem called mode conversion. If I were to receive some common mode noise back here on the driver side of this interconnect and we allow that to propagate through this length tuning structure, what's gonna happen? Well, the common mode noise is going to get out of phase with the noise on this trace. So meaning the signal that is the noise signal on this trace right here is gonna come out of phase with the signal on this top trace. So that converts that common mode noise into differential mode noise. So when we're dealing with a differential pair, we would actually like for the noise to remain common mode noise because differential receivers can suppress common mode noise. What we don't want is differential noise. So differential mode noise occurs whenever you have an asymmetry along a differential pair, including when you have this type of asymmetry like a length tuning structure. So dealing with these is a bit complicated and it's something that we're gonna address in a future video. So the takeaway from this is it's better to apply a larger spacing between your differential pairs both for propagation constant purposes and for impedance purposes. Applying that larger spacing between differential pairs is going to help reduce this mode conversion that you see on this interconnect. So if you can reduce that mode conversion, you can then better stay within your specs for your signaling standard. And of course, any noise that you do receive is going to be more likely to be suppressed by the differential receiver. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to stay tuned for our video on mode conversion in differential pairs. It's gonna be a follow-up to this very important topic and will illustrate a bit more why sometimes larger spacing between your pairs or bringing that ground plane closer to your differential pairs can be much better for performance. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And of course, last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.